This is the brand new MacBook Pro with the Apple M1 chip and wow, just wow. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if you're into creating or filmmaking. Now, we've been using the Apple M1 chip version of the 13-inch MacBook Pro for just over a week now. And I've got to say, I'm really, really impressed. This is the base model, the absolute base model MacBook Pro that you can get. And it comes with a 256 gigabyte hard drive and just eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, we've been putting it through its paces in Photoshop, Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Illustrator, Chrome, and more. And this has been performing really well, but more on that later. Let's take a look at this machine. The new MacBook Pro shares the same design as the previous Intel generation. And like the base models before, these have just two USB-C ports, so you will need an adapter if you want to add more ports to this Mac. The screen is also the same retina display as we're used to. Now, this isn't a bad thing, but I've got to be honest, I was hoping they would have a little design refresh to celebrate the launch of the new chips, but hey, it's okay. Now, this is the new M1 chip on this machine, and it should mark a huge breakthrough for Apple computing. This is a new chip packed with 16 billion transistors and integrates the CPU, the GPU, a neural engine, and I.O. all into a small, tiny chip which should actually speed up almost everything your computer does. Plus, it should give you some incredible battery performance. But the question is, how does it affect your Mac in the real world? So let's start off with that battery life. And the battery life really is incredible. And I think it could be a big enough reason for a lot of people to upgrade right now. I was using this all day Thursday, all day Friday, and the battery didn't run out. So it can last two days on a full charge pretty easily for normal work. So I was just doing emails, a uh, little bit of Photoshop work, so not super taxing stuff for a computer, but you know, probably more than the average person. And my Intel 13-inch MacBook Pro really lasts about five to six hours on a full charge doing the same kind of work. And this just got through two full days so easily. I was super, super impressed. And normally, you know, if I'm traveling around, I would tend to take my iPad Pro because the battery life is so good on that. But now it's got me thinking you could just take your 13 inch MacBook Pro with you on the go. So how is the new M1 chip? I mean, that's the reason you're here, right? Well, I've got to say, I've been super, super impressed with this. I was a little bit hesitant when Apple announced this because as you know, if uh, you're running the M1 chip, there's basically two things that are gonna happen. You either need to have a program that's written for the new Apple M1 silicon, or the program is gonna be emulated. Now, if you saw my review of the Surface Pro X, that was Windows, uh, or Microsoft's version of an ARM chip, and everything was emulated on that too. But anything that was emulated ran pretty poorly. Photoshop really lagged. If you zoomed in, you'd get the kind of stutter effect. Uh, a lot of programs like Premiere couldn't even run at all. So when I heard that Apple was gonna be doing emulation, I really, didn't have high hopes. I thought maybe they would get around uh, the problem of running all of the programs, but I thought even if you could run them, it would run pretty slowly. But I've got to say, I've been so, so impressed. Everything we've put on here runs really well. I haven't had any problems opening up any apps, emulated or not. And just the, I mean, first off, if we start talking about non-emulated apps, the apps that have been rewritten, they're primarily Apple's own apps. So Safari, Mail, Notes, all those kind of things, iMovie. Final Cut, they all run really, really fast, a lot faster than my 13-inch MacBook Pro, so that's incredible. But the emulated apps, surprisingly, run really well too. So have no fear, everything runs incredibly fast. We've done some Final Cut Pro tests, and you can see that video by clicking up here. And Final Cut has been rewritten for the new M1 chip, but that runs about 50% faster than my maxed out 13-inch MacBook Pro, which is crazy because, you know, this is the base model. And my 13-inch MacBook Pro, which I have here, is still the MacBook Pro with Intel chip that you can buy right now on Apple's site. This is only two months old. It comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, fast hard drive. So really, you know, this is like 3,000 pounds almost here in the UK. This should be still, in my opinion, for the money, a lot faster than this machine in Final Cut. And it's just not. Final Cut smashes through everything. There's no lag. I was using 10-bit footage and it just run super, super smoothly, which is absolutely incredible. And it's only got eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, apps like Photoshop 
and Premiere have not been rewritten. So how do they run? Well, there's a little bit of crashing we've seen. We've opened up Illustrator, uh, seen a little bit of crashing there from time to time and a little bit of crashing in Premiere. Nothing too major, but just be aware it does happen more, I've noticed, than if you were to run it on uh, an Intel Mac. But that said, the performance of Photoshop is loads faster again on this base model MacBook Pro than my 13 inch MacBook Pro and it's being emulated which is absolutely crazy. So I just want you to think about that. A program like Photoshop which is being read, it's being translated, it's then being emulated to run on a different bit of silicon is actually running faster emulated than it running natively on my Intel MacBook Pro. It almost doesn't make sense but that actually fills me with a lot of confidence because if already emulated apps are running this quickly, how fast is Photoshop gonna be and Premiere gonna be when Adobe rewrite those apps? It's gonna be blisteringly fast. Final Cut is super quick, all of the Apple apps are super quick. And even Chrome, I mean, if you use Google Chrome, you know it's a bit of a memory hog, it can be a bit slow with multiple apps. They've just a few days ago released the uh, M1 ARM version of Chrome and that, is super, super fast. I'll show you a couple of quick tests now. You can see here uh, that we're opening some popular websites here in the UK, and you can see the ARM M1 chip opens these like they're just preloaded. It's, it's so quick. I don't know how it's loading them this quick, but this fills me with a lot of confidence for the future of these M1 chips. So the question is, should you go out and buy this machine? Well, I think if you're someone who's just doing a bit of web browsing, a bit of Office, maybe use Google Chrome and maybe some light photo and video editing, and you're in a need for a new MacBook Pro, do you know what? I wouldn't hesitate to get this machine at all because the battery life alone sells the Mac to me. You know, the battery life on my Intel Mac isn't that great. If you've got an old Mac, it's probably degraded a bit over time. And you're getting like 15 to 20 hours of battery. For me, in a machine like this size, that's a big enough reason why I think a lot of people should probably consider upgrading. And then you couple that with super fast performance on web browsing, on email, on, you know, basic photo and video editing. You know, I haven't seen enough problems or any problems really to advise you not to go out and get this machine. But what about if you are a video editor? What if you are someone who uses the Adobe apps? What should you do? Well, you gotta remember this is the first gen edition of this machine. And as yet, the Adobe apps haven't been rewritten for the M1 chip. They do run okay, but there are a couple of factors I think you should think about. Number one, there's not much RAM available for these base model machines. The max you can get is 16 gigabytes. Now, as I've mentioned, these will run Photoshop and they will run Premiere fairly fast, but I really think if you are a creator, you should really hold out for the new iMac and the new top line models of the MacBook Pro 13 and 16 inch, because I imagine how quick these are already Apple is only gonna add more GPU support. It's only gonna add more features for video editors and video creators that I think it's worth waiting for because these are already quick and it can only get quicker. So I think if you rush out now and you buy the eight gig or 16 gig model, I think you're really gonna kick yourself when Apple release that top end model of the 13 or 16 inch MacBook Pro or they release a brand new iMac because it's gonna be so much quicker than this model here. It's already blisteringly faster than an Intel Mac. And by that point, Adobe will have rewritten the apps. That's what you've got to keep in mind at the moment. A lot of apps still aren't rewritten. You know, it's only like a week since this has been out. So you're not getting the best performance. You are probably gonna run into some bugs and errors. You might have some plugin uh, support problems. So I would wait, I would just hold back, you know, be a little bit more patient, hold your current Mac if you can, and then wait until these new 13 and 16 inch MacBook Pros come out, because I think we're gonna see some big improvements there. But overall, I am super happy with this. Um, we're using this in the office for Illustrator already. Um, we're gonna keep an eye on it. We'll let you know if we do run into any problems, but so far, this has been incredible and I've been super impressed with what Apple has done with the new silicon. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions or comments below and check out uh, the other videos on our channel because we've done some other speed tests with Photoshop, Final Cut and Premiere as well as opening up all of the apps on the Mac so you can see how that compares to my 13 inch Intel MacBook Pro. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.